Tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a rehearsal and a performance of murder. We call it The Cellar. So now, starring Mr. Eric Snowden, here is tonight's suspense play, The Cellar. I've got to put her away, and that's a fact. I've thought about it for a long time. Sixteen years, to be exact. We've been married twenty, and I think I owe it to myself to do something about it now. It's the principle of the thing, if you follow me. First of all, I don't like her voice. Jaw, jaw, jaw. Horrible sound. She goes at it morning, noon, and night. You never heard the like. Or maybe you did. Go something like this. Oscar? Oscar, how many times do I have to tell you not to put your feet on the attic? You think all I've got to do is to spend my days cleaning off your dirty boot marks. And for heaven's sake, I don't know, I'm sure, why I've got to do everything in the house. It's bad enough the way I scrimp and save week in and week out to keep a crust of bread in our mouths. Never a nope, I'm sure, of having somebody to help with the work. I really don't know why you don't get a better position always dreaming of what we're going to do. If you'd only ask the backbone, my own dad, Bloody awful, ain't it? I worked it out on paper. There's 60 seconds in a minute and 3,600 seconds in an hour and 86,400 seconds in 24 hours. You listen to that for 20 years and you go off your bleeding nut. Sooner or later, it's got to stop, and that's a thing. And there's other things. She put some kind of sheep oil luck on her hands before going to bed. And who gets smeared with it? Who else? Goodness knows. I try to keep myself looking halfway decent. It's not like I can afford a manicure twice a week like Mrs. Plimpton. I should think you'd be grateful. That chance of that. <laughs> That's not a good reason to do in your wife. I don't mind telling you, it helps. And she's always putting her feet on me back. Says they're cold and wants me to warm them for her. They're cold, all right. Like a blinking mackerel. So's my back. And she thinks she's hot stuff about keeping accounts. Always guessing about saving. And I get two bob a week spending money. I ask you, how can a man live on that? It's a perishing injustice. So all in all, that's why I got a killer. Everything's ready, and I suppose I might as well get on with it. Well, there. That looks about right. Millie? Millie? What is it, Arthur? Could you come down for a minute, love? Where are you? In the cellar, sweetheart. I'm busy. Oh, it'll only take half a mo. I've got something to show you down here. Oh, my God. Get your supper and you'll give a bad father nothing. Think I have better things to do than spoil something down. Keep your hair on, love. It won't be long. Sure, I don't know why I put up with it. You messing about down here while I'm... Oscar Wigeon. What are you doing with my cellar? Why is it all dug up like that? You go and bar me. Now, you put every scrap of that dirt back in the old this minute. You hear me? I never. All right, love. I will. Don't worry. And don't you dare come upstairs till you've cleaned off your boots. I will not have that mess all over me clean kitchen floor. All right, old cough drop. I just wanted to get an idea of the size. It looks all right. What are you talking about? Right for what? 
You, dear. Nummy. You've been drinking. You've been drinking, that's what. Not a drop. I'm a teetotal, and you know that milk. No milk, Val. The time has come, as the walrus said to the carpenter, your time. You pick up that spade this instant and fill in every bit of that hole. And no argument, you hear? All right, old car. When you're done, you'll march yourself upstairs and wash your hands and face. Because supper will be on in ten minutes, and I will not have it spoiled. No. I got something I've got to say to you. Hey? I'm fed up with your jaw. Fed to the teeth, and that's a fact. How dare you? Who do you think you're talking to? I'm fed up with your greasy hands, and I'm fed up with your clammy feet. But most of all, Will, I'm fed up with you. Oscar? So I'm going to do you in. Oscar? Don't you look at me like that. Don't you touch me. Or I'll have the law on you. I don't give a fig for you, and I don't give a fig for the law. I worked it all out. And if you think you can get up them stairs before I bash your head in, you're very much mistaken. Ah! If ever you do anything in this world, do it right. I remembered her words as I covered up the mortal remains of my ever-loving ex, Millie Widgeon. I did her a corker. One good whack on the S, so there wasn't much of a mess, if you follow my meaning. Took me about 15 minutes to cover her up nice and neat like. And then I went upstairs. You don't mind telling you. Give me a bit of a turn when I heard the front door. I hadn't had time to wash up yet, but... I wasn't too worried. Not until I saw who was standing outside. He was a copper. Gormley by name. He's got the beat on my square. Evening, Mr. Wishing. Evening, Mr. Gormley. Sorry to have to trouble you. But I had a complaint. Sorry to hear that, Mr. Gormley. Complaint states that an audible vow was heard emanating from your house. A row? The screams, more like. Screams? Who's? Uh, that's the nature of the inquiry, Mr. Widgeon. I'd be obliged if you could shed some light. Happy to, if I knew how I could help. The, uh, missus at home? No, she ran off to the picture palace. You know, these women in their ruddy pictures. What time did she go? I don't know. About an hour ago. No one else here? Not a living soul, except myself. Hmm. You been doing any screaming, Mr. Widgeon? Not bloody likely. What do you take me for? All in the nature of the inquiry, Mr. Widgeon. No offense, I hope. None took, Mr. Gormley. Uh, seeing as how I have me duty to perform, I hope you'll allow me to have a look about the premises, Mr. Widgeon. Seems to me a man's got his right, but I always hold to aid in the law. If you're looking his aid in, help yourself, Mr. Gormley. You mind telling me what you're looking for? Two neighbors swear they heard the sounds coming from here. Maybe it was on the radio. Not on. It'll save me making a report, Mr. Widgeon. Very obliging of you, I'm sure. Well, I don't think there's a need to bother you anymore. I'll just, do. Uh... Hello. Cut yourself, huh? Oh, how's that now? Cutting up a bit of beef for grub. I thought I'd give the missus a nice surprise when she gets home. I was in the kitchen when you knocked. Sorry to have disturbed you, Mr. Widgeon. All right. Makes the bloke feel safe, I know, and there's law nearby. Mm. Nice to have you say so, Mr. Widgeon. Good evening. Evening, Mr. Gormley. Four hours to clear out. Maybe longer. At eight o'clock, like I'd planned it, Aggie Jones turned up. Oh, what a bit of strawberry jam. Lovely. I'd met her a couple of months before, and I hadn't told her what I had in mind. But 
I knew she wouldn't care when she heard. After all, it was all done for her, mostly. Oh, Oscar, I, I do love you. Heavenly, ain't it? Mm. When's your wife coming home? Oh, I do feel something awful carrying on this way. Aggie, love, sit down. I've something to say to you. Aggie, will you run off with me? Run away? But you? But how can I? You're a married man, and what would my mum and dad think? Aggie, love, all I have is yours. You don't have to worry about a blinking thing. Everything is taken care of. Taken care of? But how? What's your wife going to say? She ain't going to say nothing. Aggie, for love of you, I done her in. You, you done, done her in? That's right. Well, where is she? What did you do with her? You're just about sitting over her now. She's buried in the cell. Oh, boy, how, how horrible. You, you did it for me, Oscar. For you, sweetheart. Oh, how you must love me. Never a truer word. Now, listen here, Duck. It's all arranged. In the morning, I'm taking the savings out, and you and me are buzzing off. There's a boat sailing for South America to the Argentine at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll be on it. No, I, I don't know what my mum and dad will say. Don't tell them. Write to them. From the Argentine. Oh, Oscar, you make it so hard for a girl to say no. Give us a kiss and no more argy bargy. Oh. <laughs> dreaming, I see. Uh, not much improvement in you since the last time I was here. Oh, Mill and me, we was going out when she came back. But why don't you drop in over the weekend? She, she'd love to see you. You can stay for a bit if you like. I've travelled across half of London to visit me daughter. I've no intention of going home tonight. You can go out if you want to, Oscar. Millie will stay here and talk to her mother. Oh. I haven't had me supper yet. Bought a nice bit of smoked addict. I'll go in and put it on. Uh, uh, no, I, I mean you sit here comfortable like I'll do it. You? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You think I want me addict ruined? I said, Mother dear, I'll cook your ruddy addict for you. Take it or leave it. How dare you? How dare you address me in that fashion? Go boil your head. Oh, you naughty little worm. Just wait until Millie hears about this. No, you wait. Matter of fact, this is my house, and I didn't hear no invitation for you to come in tonight. You, you've been drinking. Once and for all, I have not been drinking. Now, buzz off. I will not leave this house until me daughter comes in that door. I'm going to give you ten seconds, Mother dear, to off it. 
Then I've got a lamb you won you won't forget. Oh. One, two, you dare to eat an old three, woman. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Something I've wanted to do for a long time. All clear, Aggie, love. Oh, I, I was that frightened. Don't you worry, you pretty head. Everything's right as rain. Now, you'll have to be all. Wouldn't want do to have anybody else snooping around and find you here. Now, not a word to anyone, see? You need to be at the Marble Arts Station at 4 o'clock tomorrow, see? But what about me clothes, Oscar? Mum will ask where I'm going. Leave it to me. I'll buy you all the clothes you want. That's one thing I've got to say for poor old Millie. She wasn't a very nourishing woman, but she was a saving one. Oh, I've always wanted to go abroad. Oh, but ain't it awful? Imagine me going for the married man and the murderer. Uh, you, you're all going to marry me, aren't you, Oscar? Marry you? What a question. I got my morals, same as the next bloke. Of course I'm going to marry you. Oh, Oscar, I, I know it's wicked, but I, I can't wait till tomorrow. You dream about it, love, and before you know it, it'll be tomorrow. Now, go on. You better leave by the back door. <laughs> Next morning at ten, I was in the bank. I had me slip made out to withdraw my savings, and a nice little drop it was too, eight hundred quid. I was waiting for the money when a tallish bloke comes up to me from behind a gate, all smiles and treacle he was. Mr. Widgeon? Yes, sir. How do you do? I'm Mr. Forpaw, the manager. I understand that you wish to withdraw your savings. That's right. I trust you found no fault with our service. No, just what what's mine. That's all. Oh, of course, of course, naturally. Uh, may I inquire as to the reason you're withdrawing the fund? Does there have to be a reason? Oh, no, 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 not at all. But since you've been such a faithful depositor for so many years... Oh, well, the truth is, Mr. Forpaw, me and the missus thought we'd take a bit of an holiday. You know, the Riviera. A little sunshine and poly Oh, yes, I see. Oh, then, of course, sir, you want to leave a sum here with us? No, I want it all. But, my dear sir, you can't spend it abroad. Who says I can't? The government, sir, the government. A maximum of 50 pounds may be taken out of the country. Yes. What are you giving me? But surely you know that it's common knowledge. Not to me, it ain't. It's my money. I can do as I please with it. Here in England, yes, but you can't. Take it out to go. Oh, it's a ruddy injustice. That's what it is. I shan't argue the point, sir. I'm conservative. And that's your hard luck. Now, you hand over my money, see? What I do with it is my business. Up to it. Just as you please, Mr. Widgeon. Ah, Mr. Easton, I oversee I'd like to take it. I've done it. They've done me. What in blazes am I going to do now? <laughs> Shoved the 800 quid in my pocket and went home. And that's what I should never have done. Because when I got there, the old cow was standing in front of the door and the copper Gormley was with her. There he is, Constable. There he is. Ask him what he's done with my little daughter. Ask him. Ask mine, you meddling old egg. Now then, now then. No language, if you please, Mr. Weedon. This here lady's upset because she has knocked on the door and there's no answer from within. Well, what's that to her? She's worried about Mrs. Weechie. It's me own flesh and blood I'm worrying about. I've got a right. She ain't home. That's all. Then where is she? She went out. Shopping. He's lying. She went home last night and he put me out by force. Threatened to do me a mischief. He's done something to her. You mark my words. How would you like a fat lip? Now then, now then. Look here, I ain't got time to stand here arguing. Constable, you go in that house and see what's what. He wouldn't let me in the kitchen last night. Afraid I'd see the blood and gore where he's axed her to pieces. You go in there. Mr. Widgeon wouldn't do a thing like that, Mum. Now, why don't you go to the corner house and have a nice cup of tea? And by the time you're finished, your daughter will be home just like Mr. Widgeon says. That's right. 
I ain't moving from here till I see her alive with me own eyes. Yeah, it's all one with me, but you ain't setting foot inside. I'm not having you break up my happy home. He's afraid. He's afraid to let me in. He knows what I'll find. He knows. Oh, look at him standing there. The stain of his horrible deed still in his wicked eyes. Uh, Mr. Widgeon, I hate to ask you, but to oblige... Will you let this lady come in and satisfy yourself? You've seen for yourself, Mr. Gormley. You've seen last night. You're the law. If you can't be satisfied, who can? I ask you. Ah, oh, get him. He's got few hypnotized like he had my poor Millie. Talk a winkle off a Billy Wood, but not me. I'll mount you in, I am. But Mr. Widgeon, to oblige... Let her have a look at that. Oh, good blimey, what I have to put up with from this old gas bag. All right, all right. But it's the last time. Don't say I didn't warn you. She went through the house like a ruddy bloodhound, and there wasn't nothing. Not an air out of place. Mr. Gormley followed her with me. And I could see it was a very aggravating position for him. Mr. Gormley likes to keep the peace. But by the time we got to the cellar, he was clear out of patience. Well, satisfied? Are you satisfied? You want to look in the coal bin? Go on. Get your hands nice and dirty. Sorry to have troubled you, Mr. Wichita. Don't mention it. As for you, Mrs. Quill, I don't want to see your nasty face around here until I give the word. You stay out of Millie's and my way, see? And if you don't, I'll have you put in charge. Them's my rights, ain't they, Mr. Gormley? In the matter of speaking, disturbing the peace, Mr. Widgeon. Right. And she's disturbing my peace. Now I'll thank you to leave my house. Of course, when you come right down to it, I suppose they're right. In a way, I am a dreamer. Always have been. To tell the truth, I ain't got no 800 pound. Not even 80. There ain't no Aggie Jones. But I wish there was. There's only Millie's mother. And Millie. And them greasy hands. And cold feet. And jaw, jaw, jaw. And if I aim for what I'm going to do, it will be worth it. There. That looks about right. Billy. Billy. Could you come down for a minute, love? In the cellar, sweetheart. It'll only take off a mo. I've got something to show you down here. Yeah. Work my seams to the bone. Time to get you off the bone. Do you give a brass farthing? No. You think I haven't got better things to do than bars up and down every time you want something? Keep your hair on, love. It won't be long. Let me a little consideration. I'm fair wore out. I'm sure I don't know why I put up with it. wanted to get an idea of the size. It looks about right. What are you talking about? Right for what? For you, dear. Mr. Eric Snowden starred in tonight's presentation of The Cellar. Next week, the story of a handcuffed man and the woman who holds the key to his freedom. We call it Give Me Liberty. That's next week on Suspense. is 
produced and directed by Anthony Ellis, who wrote tonight's play. The music was composed by Lucia Marwick and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, John Daner, Betty Harford, Paula Winslow, and Ramsey Hill. Suspense is presented by the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Network, Europe.